There's boundless energy in the sun, so why not harness that energy? That was the simple question Darren Kimura posed to himself, and Sopaji Incorporated was born. The name Sopaji was actually created by combining parts of the words solar, power, and technology. Back in 2002, Sopaji invented a concentrating solar panel. And what that means is we use mirror and optics to harness the energy of the sun and we intensify it uh, with our unique uh, collector shape and, and technologies to create thermal energy, high temperature thermal energy from the sun. We use that thermal energy to turn a turbine, which is how we create electrical power. The solar collectors are not very big, comparatively speaking, about 12 feet long by 5 feet wide. Again, the parabolic shape of the collector is the secret to concentrating the sun's energy and multiplying it by about 60 times. Sopaji uses a heat transfer fluid, a mineral oil that's completely recyclable and non-hazardous through the receiver tube. And it passes through a length of collectors and the energy from the tube, uh, or the energy in the heat transfer fluid which circulates through the tube, gets uh, hotter, it increases in the energy. And from when the energy goes into the receiver and comes out of the receiver, uh, there's a very significant change in temperature, we call that a delta T. The, the larger the delta T, the more energy we can generate. Kimura has ground-mounted solar collectors, Soponova, and roof-mounted collectors, or Sopo flare units, at Sopoji's headquarters near the airport. This is actually two collectors. So one collector produces about 500 watts. Uh, and just to give you an idea of how much power that is, really about two of these collectors, uh, up to maybe four collectors, will produce enough energy for the typical Hawaiian home. So for a smaller home, these two collectors here would produce enough power for that home. Not much of the transfer fluid is needed, just enough to fill the tube. But Sopaji has added a secondary reflector and a glass sheath to make the system even more efficient. The glass and the reflector allow us to uh, eliminate, if you will, some of the thermal losses. For example, it's a little windy today. So if we didn't have this protective layer on top of our receiver, the wind would blow all the heat away. So we would lose some of our efficiency. So this is part of the intellectual properties that we generated here at Sopaji. Uh, and what we have on the inside there is a black receiver tube, one inch in diameter. That's where we circulate the oil. So it's very small. Unlike photovoltaic panels, which sit on the rooftop and produce energy for three to four hours a day, the solar collectors from Sopaji are constantly moving to capture the most sunlight at any given time. What we do is we actually track the sun. So from when the sun rises over the horizon in the morning, we follow the sun all throughout the day to the time the sun sets. That gives us more energy production, uh, oftentimes in as much as maybe eight, possibly more hours a day. So we can take what would be generally uh, a four hour solar day and get that to become an eight or nine hour solar day. Now in the end, that's what really matters to the customer. That's what really matters to the utility is generating energy. The tracker follows the sun from what's called the zero degree plane all throughout the day. So the sun is always bouncing into the receiver tube. At night, the entire collector unit is flipped upside down to protect the reflector, optics, and receiver tube from rain or any debris. Sobuji is a relatively small company with a staff of about 30 people, but the company serves clients and deploys its technology throughout the Middle East in Europe, India, South Asia, and of course here in Hawaii. All of our research and development occurs here, uh, and we have facilities in Kona, we do advanced R&D uh, and we have a lot of our engineers here in Honolulu uh, and then we have scattered throughout the United States people in Portland, Arizona, uh, Southern California and Northern California as well. Sopaji's facilities in Kona have more than a thousand solar collectors installed capable of producing about 500 kilowatts of energy. That's enough to power about 250 homes but Kimura has loftier goals for the company. Sopaji's model uh, essentially is to design and build, uh, working with our partners like Keahole Solar Power, uh, these large solar utility scale farms. So we're not looking at putting this at your house um, necessarily. We're not looking at putting this on the rooftop of a big box store, for example. Uh, we're looking at putting these out on acres of land where we can really take a big, uh, you know, big approach at reducing our dependence on fossil fuel. 
So we're looking at going after megawatts of energy versus kilowatts of energy. So Sopaji's clients are utility companies, large hotels, hospitals, the military, and university campuses. The Oahu headquarters also serves as a lab. Energy from two solar collectors is not used to power anything, it's just circulated through a series of different lab-based equipment. The energy is being used to capture the shading effects of the building and what happens when clouds are overhead. A smaller collector on the roof, the Sobo Flare Unit, is designed to create air conditioning. So that's an absorption air conditioning unit. This is a thermally driven uh, chiller and it uses heat on one end and cool water on the other end and the temperature change between the heat and the cool uh, basically excites a chemical and that chemical uh, flashes, if you will, into a, uh, a vapor and that process allows us to get cold air. Then they circulate the cold air in buildings to create air conditioning. So the neat thing about the absorption chiller is that it's completely renewable. It's creating cold air uh, from the sun, uh, completely renewable and free. So once you got the equipment installed, you're getting cold air. The thermal oil that circulates throughout the collectors during the day can actually be stored in large thermos-like containers. That way the energy can be used when the sun isn't out at night. It's a very simple process and it's cost effective as well. Kimura says the whole system is efficient, inexpensive, and most of all, simple. Competing technologies out there like photovoltaic, which is a semiconductor-like material which converts sunlight into electrical power, that's very expensive. It really takes an ex extensive process to get that semiconductor material to be able to convert that light into electrical power. With what we're doing, it's very simple. You know, we're talking about sheet metal, we're talking about liquids into a thermos, and that's our solution. Another draw is installation. The system can be set up by a local technician. No need for a specialist from the mainland to be called in. That saves money and time. Like many other startup high-tech companies, the High Technology Development Corporation, HTDC, was also instrumental in helping Sopaji get a foothold in the industry. Kimura was working in Seattle, Washington at the time, and he figured the best place for a high-tech company to establish itself would be Northern California's Silicon Valley. We had very little traction. We had a hard time finding cash. Um, and at that time, in the early 2000 era, uh, you know, green tech wasn't really happening. It was still a little bit of recovery after the dot-com bust. So I found HTDC's programs online and I reached out through uh, the internet to their offices and had a phone interview. And it was very intriguing. So I visited with them when I came home uh, for for Christmas uh, and really just absolutely love the programs and the idea behind the MIC uh, incubator. So we eventually moved back to Hawaii uh, and began working very hands-on with them. Kimura has used HTDC's professional service provider program and Sopaji's participation in HTDC's many seminars has been helpful. They're put on by some of the very best and brightest in Hawaii. That has given us exposure and connections uh, to, to these individuals which we may not have had otherwise. Uh, and of course, they're just very, very helpful. I mean, they've got a manufacturing program which we turned to when we, be, when we began moving from a prototype R&D company into a manufacturing company. Uh, they helped us with some grants. Um, initially, so they have grant writers there that were very useful as well. Kimura credits HTDC as being the key factor that brought Sopaji to Hawaii. As for the future, the company is growing and there are new challenges along the way. I mean, we need every good invention to get to the market because uh, there's so much market out there to be had. And that includes the known market, the markets that are using electrical energy today, plus the emerging markets, markets that are not using power but will be in the next five years. Uh, so Sopaji has to be resilient. We have to invent, uh, we have to modify technologies for different regions and applications. Uh, we want to be a global company, possibly the biggest company in solar, uh, and we want to do that from Hawaii. So we have to grow our staff, we have to continue our R&D, we have to uh, continue getting smarter about uh, what we do. Sopaji is a small company with a big reach and an ever-evolving plan to help it continue thriving in the fast-paced high-technology world. Thank you.